Well, come on in, guys. This is Three Bold Takes. Freddie, Chase, and Quinn here. We're in week three of predictions, guys. Super excited. College football season is fully underway. However, there's always one of these weeks every year where it is just a drag. Not many great games. However, we did find four for you. And on this one, we're talking about the green wave in Tulane and the Oklahoma Sooners this week and what we think is going to be a great matchup. Uh, Tulane goes to Oklahoma. They are 14 and a half dogs, guys. Let's get it right. Let's get it right. 14 and a half dogs over under is 51 and a half. Game time is set for 2.30 on Saturday. Quinn, talk to me, baby. Well, one, I guarantee you it's the under, and I guarantee you Tulane's going to win on the spread. Uh, that is way too high of a spread. Oklahoma has not impressed me up to this point in the season. I do think they're getting better, and I think defensively, we're finally seeing Brett Venables pay off on the defensive side of the ball for Oklahoma. Those two things I'm convinced of. Tulane's good. And Tulane is very pissed off and disappointed about last weekend. Um, but notice I guaranteed Tulane would cover the spread. I did not guarantee a Tulane victory. Because on, on the inside here, Darn it. that Oklahoma defense is really solid. And we're talking about a really, really tough road atmosphere. I thought long and hard. I'm going to go Sooners. Blocking a game-winning field goal attempt from Tulane that is in excess of 45 yards. In, in timeout, I wish we had a That's, statistician to see how many of these predictions that Quinn does like this is actually dude, right. it's all the time. He has these specific he predictions a lot. Some of these have become yeah. true. So. Dude, some of, some of them have hit, though. Yeah, I mean, go You're back right. and go back and look at uh, when we. I think it was previewing uh, Georgia, Alabama, and the SEC title, like down to it. Or go and look at my go and look at my Michigan with uh, Washington national title prediction. Anyway, uh, they also miss way more than they're accurate. Uh, but yeah. I will take pride in the ones that hit. Um, I like Oklahoma to win close. I I, I don't. I feel for Tulane because genuinely Tulane is, in my book, top three G5 school. But their their non-con schedule for a G5 school was it, – it, it was really hard this year. Kansas State and Oklahoma are both very talented P4 programs, and that's just a tough ask for any G5 school, even the really good ones – uh, and I thought Kansas State was honestly their better chance to get a team because they got them at home. Uh, I think Kansas State's probably a slightly better team than Oklahoma, but you got them in New Orleans instead of having to go on the road. Uh, and then on top of that, Norman's a way harder road environment than than uh, Kansas State is. So, yeah, you look at 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 Oklahoma, they. They beat Houston by four points. Houston in week one, I don't know if you guys know, got trounced by UNLV, and they were like a 20-something point favorite against UNLV. Something something crazy. Yeah. And they got trounced. Well, then Oklahoma turns around and plays them close. Listen, I don't know what's wrong with Jackson Arnold, but he has not showed me the potential and the hype that has been talked about all offseason. I mean, last week, 19 of 32, 174 yards, two touchdowns, one interception, a QBR of 37 and a half. That's not going to get it done long term, man. Like it's just not. Um, we kind of spoke a little bit about Tulane um, in our um, Memphis um, uh, prediction. Um, I think Oklahoma wins the game, but I think it is a close one. When I love your take on uh, Tulane and the points, I, I think thirteen and a half is a little ridiculous to me. It's insane. It's really I disrespectful. Yeah, it, it is, and I'm not quite sure why it's that way, um, especially when you look at what Tulane did a week ago and what Oklahoma did a week ago. I, it's that way because people in Vegas who don't really, really watch stuff just see the brand OU, and they've never heard of Tulane, and they go, yeah, 13 and a half. Oklahoma's going to win that game. Plus, they say the 15 beside Oklahoma's name, which I think is is a little high in my opinion. We don't oh, really, yeah. I don't really know much about Oklahoma this year, but I know that they're not the 15th best team in the country. Um, I'm going to go Oklahoma to win the game, but I think Tulane keeps it extremely close. I was very impressed with what they did last week um, against Kansas State, 
and super unimpressed with Oklahoma so far this year um, in 2024. Yeah, I think this is a, you know, we we talked Memphis and all this and that. I love Tulane. I think Tulane's going to be an exceptional team this year. They play in a very tough conference for the group of five. Um, John Summerall's a great coach, and he's only going to grow as he gets here. But, man, you're a group of five team, and you're playing Kansas State and Oklahoma, not even in the same season, but back-to-back weekends. You put what looks like a whole lot of your effort into trying to beat Kansas State at home because you probably were thinking, like Quinn said, this is the one to win. Now you're going to Norman. I Honestly, I think this is going to be a little bit more opened up. Uh, I think it's going to be a 14-point win. I'll still take Tulane on the points like you guys, but I think it's going to be a 14-point win, like a 31-17, to 28-14 uh, kind of game. I think Oklahoma, you got to remember who's head coach. It's Venables from Clemson, one of the best uh, defensive uh, coordinators in the last couple decades. Uh, and, you know, that's where they're going to be good at first. And I think Venables, his his struggle as a head coach has been bringing along his offense. Um, they can win some games, but the offense just hasn't always been there. You kind of moved around quarterbacks, and now you have Jackson Arnold. So we're going to see how, because this is Venable's guy now. Dylan Gabriel came from UCF or wherever beforehand, so it wasn't his guy. But uh, now you have your guy. How does he develop? Is he going to be – he's he's young. I think he's like a true sophomore, if I'm not mistaken. So he's only sat one year, been in the program for one year. Um but you're going to see how he progresses. And this is a huge game for him. So you're probably bringing him along in his first couple of starts, trying to get something to work out. And Houston's a tough team as well. They're really good. Um, they're big 12 now, almost a group of five for them. But they're, they're a tougher team uh, to play against if you're a young guy. It's not like these cupcake games. And that's what's kind of cool about college football has kind of changed around is um, you're not playing just FCS schools the first couple of weeks or, or whatnot before you get into league play or conference play. So um, Houston is, for a young guy, probably a little tougher than maybe a uh, – because, like, the week before they played Temple and won by 48. So, you know, I think it's a little different there. But I think it's going to be a great game. I think Tulane's going to play pretty tough. But I think eventually this back-to-back weekend is going to hurt them in the long run to make the playoffs, definitely if they drop this game pretty heavily. Uh, I'm going to go Oklahoma here as well, though. I think Venables, Arnold gets it done. And I think the offense kind of takes a little bit more of a spark. And I, I'm going to say a two-touchdown win for the Sooners as well. Look, I'll say this. Like, Houston is a P4. Temple and Tulane are, are not. Three years ago, they were all in the same conference. Like, they're not that different. Now, that being said, Temple was a bottom feeder. Um, yeah. But yeah. – they were all still in the same conference. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Tulane lo- – let's say Tulane loses this game. We all picked Oklahoma. But then they went out. Are they still the G5 rep despite two losses? Because look at their two losses, especially let's say Oklahoma's yeah. an eight-ish win team and Kansas State is like a Big 12 runner-up. Like those losses look – well, really we're, we're, we're sitting here talking about the group of five teams and who they may or may not lose to. We're talking about our big ones, Memphis, Tulane, Boise State, right? I think it's going to be some crap where they don't care anything about the actual schedule they played and, like, who won the most games, kind of like Liberty from last year. Liberty was the 133rd out of 133rd, uh, 33 teams in the FBS, or, yeah, FBS last season. They were a terrible team, and they got shown that on the field against Oregon. Any, there's, there were a couple more teams last year that should have been in that game against Oregon that might have put up a little bit different of a fight than Liberty did. Well, and I'm very worried that's what still happens if Memphis drops a game to a, a bigger school like Florida State this week or if Tulane drops a game like this back-to-back games. I think it could hurt them. I don't want to say Liberty was like a terrible team. They were still an undefeated football team. They were just like put in a situation they shouldn't have been in because their strength of schedule was garbage, which I, I agree with. And I am. I'm afraid that might happen with like a Liberty or a Mac school who might go undefeated and the Mac's not super, super tough. Yeah, that, that's a big fear of mine, especially when you look at the American. It's just such a better league. Than yep. the, sometimes the Sun Belt is close. Sometimes the Mountain West is close mm-hmm. every now and again. But the American is consistently like the best league in the G5. And I think when you're picking at the, for the playoffs for that, I think that's what you have to stare at is, okay, yeah, this team is nine and three, but their three losses come from 
a top five group of five team and then also two FBS teams, regardless of who they may be, compared to, okay, Liberty just won out in the CUSA, who is comically the worst group of five conference that there is. You know, I think that's something you got to stare at if you're – and hopefully they do since it's the playoffs now and it's not just some New Year's Six Bowl. So uh, I, I hope it's a lot different. All right. I think that's it, guys. We were talking the Green Wave, the Sooners, this weekend on Saturday, 2.30. Guys, we're super excited. That's all for our week four, hopefully, or week three. My bad for our four games in week three. Make sure to go check all those out. We talked a couple group of fives. Huge implications for them this year. We're kind of, we're going to incorporate more of them just because they're going to be in the playoffs eventually with us. So we'll be talking some more about them and keeping eyes on them. But, guys, for three bold takes, Freddie, Chase, and Quinn, thank you so much for watching, paying attention to us, and loving on us, guys. We appreciate y'all.